It's my turn. Here is your host for my turn, Don Wildman. Near Dublin, England, an illiterate young lay preacher started a series of religious meetings in a barn. Folks who attended said it was a rather discouraging meeting. It didn't last too long. The preacher just simply stopped the services, packed up his bag, and moved on to what he considered more fruitful fields. Only a few folks turned out for those meetings, and they weren't much interested in the series. There was a young boy who had made a decision for Christ during the meetings, but no one paid much attention to him. Everybody knew him. It was just Gus and the crowd hardly got excited when Gus made his decision. Strange indeed are the ways we measure success. Numbers. Statistics. That's the only method many of us have to judge the worth of a venture. So we count as failures those ventures where we're not overwhelmed with numerical success. If the leading citizens of the community had come to the meetings, made decisions to become followers of the way, why, the meetings would have been a success. They would have been continued. But just Gus? Why, it was as if everyone had wasted his time. A fellow told me recently that hindsight is a whole lot better than foresight. The only problem is that by the time we get to the hindsight place, we've already followed our foresight. And using our foresight, we measure the worth by the size. I remember a story about a man who made a decision. His townspeople didn't get too excited about it. This man decided to become a preacher. When he returned to his home church to preach, many of the people wouldn't listen to him. Do you know why? It wasn't because he didn't have anything to say worth listening to. He did. But it was because of who he was. Is not this the carpenter's son? they asked. And because he was the carpenter's son, and not the son of the high priest, those neighbors of his would not listen to what he had to say. Instead, they literally ran him out of town, following his sermon in which he spoke some unpopular truth to them. Well, little Gus grew up and also turned out to be a preacher. He had a lot of enemies, and was an enemy to some people himself. He wrote several books, despite the fact that he died when he was 38 years of age. Those books are out of print now, long since forgotten. He preached many times, but his sermons aren't remembered now. And Gus also liked to write poems and songs. He wrote 133 in all. Most of them have not survived the years since Gus was around. But one song that Gus wrote has survived the years, and it gives every indication of surviving many, many more centuries. The hymn can be found in nearly every hymn book you pick up. It is entitled, Rock of Ages. It's one of the favorite hymns of millions and has been a source of inspiration to countless numbers. Augustus M. Toplady shot a hole in the popular conception that success in a venture for the Creator can only be measured in numbers. This has been My Turn with Don Wildman, a production of the American Family Association.